As foreign direct investment, FDI, in China reaches a 30-year low, the Dutch government has decided to close its consulate in Chongqing, a city that once served as a stronghold for foreign investments in southwestern China. More Western countries are decoupling from China, and the closure of the Chongqing consulate may mark the beginning of other countries shutting down their missions in China. The Dutch embassy in China announced on its official week on March 1st that the consulate general would officially close on that day. The statement said, Now the work scope of the embassy in Beijing will also cover Chongqing, Sichuan, Yunnan, and Guizhou. The Dutch consulate general in Chongqing opened at the end of September 2013 and has been operating for over 10 years. The Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs expressed respect for the Netherlands' decision on March 4th, stating that each country has the right to decide whether to establish or revoke diplomatic missions abroad. According to a report by Singapore's media on March 5th, a staff member at another foreign consulate in Chongqing revealed that the sudden closure of the Dutch consulate was unexpected. They speculated it was likely due to the recent tensions between China and the West, and it may also indicate that China is losing its attractiveness to foreign investment. The consulate staff member explained to the Singapore media that Chongqing's foreign direct investment has not yet bounced back to the pre-pandemic level of over 10 billion U.S. dollars annually. The ongoing closure of consulates in the southwestern region by Western countries in recent years is linked to factors like limited economic and trade relations and high costs of establishing consulates. According to a March 4th Bloomberg report, a Dutch representative spoke to foreign business people in Chengdu on March 1st. This representative indicated that the primary factor behind the closure was the decreasing economic and trade interactions. Over the past two years, exchanges between the Netherlands and China's southwestern region have steadily declined, and direct flights between the Netherlands and Chongqing have been halted. Chongqing is the hub of political and economic development in southwestern China. However, there are not many countries that have consulates in Chongqing. Denmark closed its consulate there in December 2021. Currently, the countries that still have consulates in Chongqing include Japan, Canada, and Hungary. The United States once had a consulate general in Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan province not far from Chongqing. In July 2020, the Chinese consulate general in Houston was closed at the request of the U.S., and China announced countermeasures, closing the U.S. consulate general in Chengdu. The decision to withdraw from Chongqing by the Netherlands will undoubtedly have some impact on the international community and is interpreted as the Netherlands adjusting its policy towards China. Just as Sino-Dutch relations are gradually deteriorating, ties between Taiwan and the Netherlands are warming up. The Dutch representative office in Taiwan, the Netherlands Trade and Investment Office, announced its renaming to the Netherlands office in Taipei on April 27, 2020. This is another foreign mission in Taiwan to change its name following countries such as the United Kingdom, Australia, and Japan. These name changes not only reflect souring cross-strait relations, but also reflect increased cooperation between these countries and Taiwan. Dutch diplomat Guy Wittig, on the evening of April 27, 2020, recounted the cooperation between the Netherlands and Taiwan through a video. He highlighted how their cooperation has expanded from trade and investment to include green energy and cybersecurity. He stated that Dutch business in Taiwan has expanded into many new areas in recent years and that the simplifying of the office name better encompasses this relationship. Regarding the reason for the closure of the Dutch consulate in Chongqing, some believe it stems from an incident several days ago when Dutch journalists were violently treated by police while interviewing protesters in Chengdu. On February 27th, a Dutch journalist was preparing to interview victims of the trust company bankruptcy outside the Sichuan Trust headquarters in Chengdu. Sawyer Den Das, one of the Dutch journalists was among them. When they approached the group of protesters, plainclothes police officers dragged the Dutch journalist and photographer away from the crowd. Their cameras and phones were also confiscated, and they were detained by the authorities for several hours in a nearby police station. After they were released, they wanted to continue their interviews, but security and plainclothes officers were still at the scene, and the protesters had all disappeared. On March 2nd, the Dutch national broadcaster NOS reported that frontline journalists were violently arrested by the Chinese police while covering the bankruptcy of Sichuan Trust in Chengdu. 
The Netherlands called on the Chinese government to respect the rights of foreign journalists to report on China, respect the universally recognized freedom of speech and the most basic human freedom, and demanded that the Chinese authorities ensure the safety of all threatened individuals. The Chinese government responded to the report with warnings. Some commentators believe that such protests occur every day in various parts of China, and the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, is used to it. However, what was unexpected was that this time the Dutch government took serious action by immediately closing the consulate. The aftermath of this diplomatic incident may have just begun to have an international impact. Chinese affairs expert Wang He analyzed that the Dutch closed its consulate in Chongqing to reflect its distancing from the CCP. There are two main contexts. First, Dutch society is becoming increasingly resentful of the CCP. For example, Dutch universities have begun to refuse students who have received scholarships from the China Scholarship Council because recipients of the scholarships must pledge allegiance to the Communist Party and report to the Chinese embassy in their host country. In essence, they must spy. Last April, the Dutch General Intelligence and Security Service, AIVD, also warned that Dutch universities are tempting targets for espionage activities, and the CCP is the biggest threat. Furthermore, in 2019, Leiden University, the oldest university in the Netherlands and a renowned center for Sinology Research internationally, announced the closure of its Confucius Institute. Second, the Dutch government must respond to the threats and systemic challenges posed by the CCP. For example, in 2022, Dutch media discovered evidence that the Chinese government had set up at least two covert police stations in the Netherlands to suppress the voices of Chinese dissidents in Europe, which is a violation of Dutch sovereignty. Also, on February 6, 2024, the Netherlands publicly accused the CCP of launching cyber attacks on its defense network for the first time. Reports from the Dutch intelligence agencies MIVD and AIVD indicated that attackers had placed malicious software to hide their activities in a network used by a 50-person armed forces for non-classified research. The Dutch defense minister called it part of the CCP's political espionage activities against the Netherlands and its allies. In terms of economic and trade activities, China officially became the Netherlands' second largest trading partner in 2020. In 2021, bilateral trade between China and the Netherlands exceeded 100 billion US dollars for the first time, reaching 116.4 billion US dollars. However, since last year, bilateral trade has shown a decline for the first time in recent years. With the rise of the CCP's assertive wolf warrior diplomacy and the trend of de-risking from the United States and Europe, the Netherlands is naturally starting to see the CCP more as a rival than as a partner, adhering to its international strategy of being EU-centered but closely aligned with the U.S. The most prominent example is in the field of semiconductor equipment. In 2019, the Dutch government followed the United States in banning ASML from exporting its most advanced extreme ultraviolet EU lithography machines to the CCP. On January 27, 2023, the United States, Japan, and the Netherlands reached an agreement in Washington to control chip exports to China. At the request of the Biden administration, ASML has now been restricted from selling its most advanced lithography machines to China. An estimated 15% of its sales from China are expected to be affected by the new export control measures this year. Many analysts believe that this may be the main reason for the closure of the Dutch consulate. ASML Holding NV, a Dutch semiconductor manufacturer, is currently the only company in the world that produces the equipment needed to manufacture the most complex semiconductors, and demand for its products is a barometer of the health of the industry. The company's top lithography machine customers include Intel, Samsung, and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. In the semiconductor manufacturing equipment industry, the average selling price of a device is $10 million, while ASML's high-end machine sells for as much as $180 million. ASML saw its orders more than double in the fourth quarter of last year due to Chinese buyers rushing to buy lithography machines before restrictions begin. ASML recently announced that its order backlog for the fourth quarter of last year surged to a record 91.9 billion euro, up from 26 billion euro in the third quarter, equivalent to about 99.8 billion dollars. It is worth noting that ASML's brilliant performance last year was mainly due to orders from China. 
Data shows that in the fourth quarter of last year, orders from China accounted for 39% of ASML sales, making it the company's largest customer in 2023. In comparison, sales from China only accounted for 8% in the first quarter last year. Data from Chinese Customs also confirms the above. From July to November last year, China's import of lithography machines increased more than fivefold, reaching 3.7 billion US dollars. This indicates that the impending export restrictions on lithography machines have forced Chinese companies to engage in a last minute buying frenzy. Extreme ultraviolet EUV lithography technology is one of the most advanced chip manufacturing technologies today, and due to international restrictions, China has been unable to independently produce some key technologies and components. The CEO of ASML said that the CCP would need at least 20 years to develop EUV lithography technology on its own. In addition, due to the influx of Chinese subsidized electric vehicles into the European market, the rift between the CCP and the EU is deepening. Faced with unfair competition from Chinese electric vehicles, Stellantis, a Dutch car company, has had to cut its costs. Lan Shu, a current affairs commentator in the United States, told the media, Electric vehicles have become a trade issue, which is not surprising. There are many computers and satellites connected to electric vehicles. The whole process involves a lot of personal information, and it is indeed the collection of information which may threaten the national security of the Netherlands. In conclusion, the sudden closure of the Dutch consulate in Chongqing indicates a deterioration in relations between the two countries, or at least a reduction in trade. The intensification of geopolitical conflicts may be the deep-seated reason. The CCP also knows this well, and has uncharacteristically acknowledged that leaving is the right of the Netherlands. In recent years, major trading partners like the United States, the Netherlands, and other Western countries have found it necessary to consider decoupling from or reducing risks with China. This change is particularly because Western countries have observed that the Xi Jinping administration has shifted its focus from economic development, which was the main priority during China's first 30 years of reform, to emphasizing national security and regime security over the past decade. The national security law was passed by the Chinese National People's Congress Standing Committee on February 27th, and it will take effect on May 1st. The new security law will deepen the concerns of foreign investors and companies about operating in China. The new law stipulates that anyone who has engaged in what the CCP considers to be confidential work in China will be affected when leaving the country, and foreigners are not exempt. Therefore, some analysts pointed out that China's new law tends to be more stringent and vague, which will make China's legal system more opaque, posing challenges to foreign businesses in China. Meanwhile, the authorities have arrested foreign business people in China on national security grounds, conducted searches of foreign consulting firms working in China, and interrogated their employees. Any information could be deemed by the Chinese authorities as involving national security or confidentiality. This makes it difficult for foreign investors to assess the risks of their investments in China. Zhang Tianliang, a host on a YouTube channel, discussed the closure of the Dutch consulate, suggesting that the increasingly opaque situation in China is making the business environment for foreign investments more unpredictable. He believes that the closure of the Dutch consulate in Chongqing could mark the start of other countries closing their embassies in China. In the past, China's closed-door policy was self-imposed, locking itself inside and not willing to interact with the world. It locked the door from the inside and said that as long as they opened the door, China would be open to the outside world. However, the current closed-door policy is different from before. Developed countries have locked the door from the outside, holding the key in their hands, and they don't want to play with China anymore. So even if the CCP wants to open up and engage with others, others may not want to engage. That's why the Netherlands simply closed its consulate. If you want to open up, you need to first establish good relations with others, so it's not as simple as wanting to open up. Western countries are increasingly decoupling their economies from China after facing the U.S.-China trade war, crackdowns on the private economy, the Hong Kong suppression, three years of pandemic control, Shanghai's lockdown, and Chinese support for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Data released by China's State Administration of Foreign Exchange in mid-February showed that in 2023, foreign direct investment in China has hit its lowest level since the early 1990s. 
This highlights the lack of interest from foreign capital when Beijing seeks overseas capital to enter and assist in rebuilding the Chinese economy. U.S. lawmakers have recently called for Washington to impose more rigorous scrutiny measures and policy norms on U.S. corporate investment in China. For China, decoupling economically from the U.S. means losing an important consumer market, leading to overcapacity and unsold products for Chinese companies. Foreign capital withdrawals will impact every aspect of the Chinese economy. Despite the CCP's efforts, China's economic prospects in 2024 are likely to remain bleak.